Maybe it is time for a change. Like, maybe it is time. I have to admit, I have never tried. Well, looky there. Obstacle is his name. Yeah, just another. Hello, obstacles. Don't give me any obstacles, obstacle. All right, so this is the one RV. Pretty famous. Do you heat metal up in that fire? Yeah, this orange cold board right here. Yeah, hot iron in the fire. No. Metal? Here is a little tip. We're just arriving to our campground here in Elkhart, Indiana, and this is literally the first time that this has ever happened to us pulling into a campground. Like, this is you don't ever remember yeah, this happening before. Seen it. Never ever have we had to wait in a line. At what time is it, six? Six o'clock at night. Like I've seen before where like people that go to Thousand Trails Orlando right at the time that you could check in and everything like that, there's a line, but at six o'clock at night? Yeah. This is nuts. Like I kind of thought Elkhart, Indiana was gonna be like a sleepy little town. I don't know what we're getting ourselves into here. It's gonna be an interesting next couple of days. Our first place to check out in Elkhart is the RV Museum and Hall of Fame. This is also a Harvest Host location where you can park overnight for free if you're a Harvest Host member. These elk statues are all over town and the entire Elkhart County area, which covers 482 square miles. This area is referred to by locals as the RV capital of the world, and it is known for its sizable Amish and Old Order Mennonite population. All right, so this is the one RV, pretty famous, pretty famous coming up here. So many old like vintage travel trailers and campers and motorhomes, it's so fun. But I have to admit, it kind of smells like your really old grandma's house. I don't know, it's just weird. It smells vintage, we'll call it vintage. This is CB User 101. Um, come back. Over. Anybody out there know Candy Cane? Is there like a custom horn that you can pick? Yeah, I think the, there's. A, yeah, I don't know if it works right now. But I wouldn't Does it test work? that, but. Huh? Yeah, I wouldn't test it, but. Don't. But does it's it? A loud, I think it's a loud horn. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Here, come here, like. Whoa. This is very cool. Ooh, <gasps> two Victron Multipluses. This is four Battleborn Game Changers. I cannot believe that they actually like drove in this mm -hmm. down the road. Like, I, first of all, I'm sure that it was not the most quiet ride ever. But the other thing is, it's just with everything being so vintage, like, man, but probably a little bit spoiled, but. It's just crazy to think like this was actually in use like what last year or whatever that it was. It's I don't know. It's cool. It's vintage. It's vintage. I think I would prefer in a museum, not like on the road, but it's fun. <laughs> Look at Coda. What you doing, silly boy? Are you Gary? Was that you, that big loud noise I heard over there? What'd you do? I was walking down and I, <laughs> I tripped and I think I twisted my ankle. And you fell? Ankle. Yes, wow. I fell, I think I twisted my ankle. Hmm. Right here, mm -hmm. you know what this is? Is that a cassette tape? It's not a cassette tape. It's, it's just a what you call a, an eight track. What is that? What, That's what, what they had track? before cassettes. So you'd have like, you know, Juice Newton on here. Huh? <laughs> Who's Juice, Juice Newton? Newton? The only artist I know is Juice World. Juice Newton. So, yeah, you put it right in there, and it'd play just like kind of like a cassette. Charity, what was the story behind this one here? The black one. The black one, yeah. So, go ahead. So these two people basically found it by a dumpster 
And it had like animals and all sorts of stuff wrong with it. And then they um, renovated it and they spent close to a half a million dollars renovating it. Wow. Hard sighted pop up. When I was a kid, my family borrowed this pop up from some friends and we had like the best time in that thing. And I think like when you're a kid and maybe you tent camp or whatever, why that's fun. And then you like have this little upgraded experience where you're in like a camper and then you just, you feel like you're on top of the world. It's so much fun. Like it really makes me wonder if just the season of life that we're in and like where the kids are with the RV and everything like that. Like maybe it is time for a change. Like maybe it is time I don't know, for just something different, something yeah. new, something exciting, something fresh. Uh, like I don't it. Know. Like you're thinking. Maybe we need to do some more thinking on that. Yeah. That says Lazy Days House Car. Oh, Lazy Days. D A Z E. You could fit like three people on that seat. You could like lay down on it, take a nap. <laughs> like, no, like lay down the other way even. <laughs> I'm too long. That's crazy. So this is a 1985 Fleetwood Founder. And the thing that's interesting about this, you got a door that comes in here, but then there's a door, I assume, to the back. We're going to go find out in just a second, but it's crazy. crazy. So what do you think? It's time for beds. <laughs> what the heck? You're not down? It'd be kind of awkward, wouldn't it be? It's kind of like a leave it to beaver sort yeah, of thing. Good, I had to keep me warm at night. Right? A blanket. Yeah. Now, while Elkhart might be the RV capital of the world, one thing that has never ceased to amaze us is that with all of the technology put into RVs, one thing that they still don't seem to get right is the mattresses that come with RVs. And this is why we love our mattress from RVmattress.com. We have the Aurora Lux Hybrid Mattress, and it's been great having a mattress that has all of the comforts of home because Let's face it, this RV really is our home. The process to have it shipped to us and then get it into the RV was super simple. Their mattresses come rolled up in a box, wrapped in plastic. So when our mattress did arrive, we were able to hoist it into the RV, unwrap the plastic, and it poofed right up. Now we realize that many of you might be a part-time RVer, so what about those times when you're not on the road? One thing we realized is we were actually sleeping better in our RV than when we were at the Glamper Hideaway vacation rental. So we went through brooklynbedding.com, which is RV Mattress's parent company, to upgrade all of the mattresses that are inside of our vacation rental. Now we know when we're hosting guests, they're getting a restful night's sleep as well. One of the things we love about RV Mattress is they are right here in the U.S with a factory in Arizona. They ship for free and come with a 10-year warranty. So we are set when it comes to mattresses for a very long time. And because we really want to be able to use this channel to be a resource for you and the RV community and share our experiences, we have partnered with RVmattress.com for 25% off for our viewers. You can learn more at RVmattress.com forward slash grateful, save with the code grateful, or visit the link in the description below. And a huge thanks to RV Mattress for sponsoring this video and their continued support of our channel. Now, back to the video, because I can't wait to show you some of the amazing things that we found in Indiana, of all places. So we wrapped up at the Motorhome Hall of Fame and dropped Ben off back at the RV. Now, the Motorhome Hall of Fame, I have mixed feelings. There's some really cool vintage campers and, of course, the Bluebird that KYD did their Route 66 thing in. That was definitely cool to see. So some cool stuff, but overall, you definitely don't need a ton of time. Let's just put it that way. Hour, couple hours, you're good. That's all you need. The county fair happens to be going on for Elkhart County. Now we've been told this thing is like the third largest county fair that happens in the US. And we're sitting in traffic right now. And I would say probably, yeah, probably this is like the third largest because there's a crap ton of traffic, lots of cars. So it should be pretty fun. So the kids and I are gonna go see what sort of mischief we can find. Like, does it live up to the hype? We're about to find out. It's like a big, huge harvester. tractor. It's a harvester. Harvester, yeah, you think? Harvest. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. So they got big muscles. Pets. Here, here's one you could pet. You 
wanted a giant corn dog. That thing's giant. It's giant. Good. I have to admit, I have never tried an elephant ear. No, they weren't kidding. They have them behind me. Let us know if you've had elephant ears. Elephant ears, classic food for fairs. Yes, no? Let us know. We're gonna let you know what we think here in just a minute. We're gonna go try one. I'm the magician. I'm the moo guy in town. This is the famous color changing red handkerchief. It's red, it goes into my empty hand. This young lady's gonna tell me a color I should change it into. Blue. Uh, pink yeah. is beautiful. Okay, it goes in red, she said pink. Did you say pink? Uh, Doesn't matter, I don't have a handkerchief anyway. What? Okay. Oh, look at that, look at that. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Right, you awesome. Yeah. Let's go find a spot to go take this and sit down and eat. So what do you think of the elephant ear? Fried butter on a steak. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Yeah. I, it tastes you gotta so dip it in the frosting. Do you heat metal up in that fire? Yeah, this is orange full board right here. Do you have How many irons in the fire now? No. <laughs> It's a goat coat. Who's here? Get him. Go get him. Here is a little tip. We had a little issue in Sandusky where my uh, microphone put in my fanny pack that was supposed to be waterproof before we went on this little water ride. Well, I didn't zip the pocket and a bunch of water got into the fanny pack and it ruined one of the mics. We just ordered one here in Elkhart and had it sent to an Amazon locker that's at a 7-Eleven. So we're gonna go and get this mic. Well, looky there, Amazon. Obstacle is his name. Yeah, just another. Hello, obstacles. Don't give me any obstacles, obstacle. Okay, so, so we got to. We what do we do? You enter in a code. So I've got the code here. We're gonna scan it down here. <gasps> code accepted. Oh, oh, what did it do? It opened it up. All right. Here it is. That's cool. Anything else there? It worked. You're hilarious. You'll have to check out last week's episode right up here where we had a little, let's say, poopsie as we were pulling into our campground. And then tune in next week as we take on our biggest boondocking challenge yet.